Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights of Arkham. This time in Unexpected Courage series, I will be playing the first scenario of the Path to Carcosa campaign. And I ended up picking a Minty Fan from the box to be our investigator for this playthrough. Uh, I was debating on Mark or Sabina, but I think the card pool is a bit punishing in the inspecting aspect of the game without some key cards from uh, other sets or later in the cycle. So I ended up uh, picking the uh, seeker who can actually investigate and uh, let's look at Min's deck, so I'll walk it through. I have uh, a few weapons, just in case a lantern can deal one damage if needed somewhere. And uh, also helps with investigating. Uh, we have the baseball bat times two, so if we really need to fight something, we have a, a way to boost our combat up a bit. Uh, not much, but... Uh, at least a little. We have letter codes which help us keep healthy. And uh, of course, Dr. Milan Christopher is just really good, an ally from Seeker, so I added that. Uh, there are also two fieldworks from the Path to Carcosa set. Uh, fieldwork is really nice if you move into a location and have to do a test immediately. Uh, for some reason for investigating or something else for fighting for some for example so it gives you uh, some boost to that um, skill tests i also have grown to like hiding spots a bit in my in smart conspiracy playthrough so i decided to add hiding spots also into this de deck it might help you get past some um, annoying enemy that is blocking your movement in this scenario and in Path to Carcosa in later scenarios also. Lucky is always good. Uh, mind over matter is just to be a um, save valve so to speak. If you have to fight or evade uh, you can play mind over matter to boost your base skill to your intellect. Then, as Min usually likes to have a lot of skills, there are 12 skills in this deck. Two Guts, two Manual Dexterities, two Perceptions. I ended up adding two Resourcefuls. I was debating also on Deduction, but in this scenario, for example, there are no double clue locations, so it's useless basically, and uh, instead went with Survival Instincts. And of course, there are two copies of Unexpected Courage, which is a really easy add with the, such a limited card pool. Uh, the basic weakness ended up being Silver Twilight Acolyte, so we have an extra enemy in the deck, which is quite annoying. But yeah, that is basically the deck. Uh, we are going investigating and evading and have a bit of fighting just in case. Uh, curtain Call is notorious of being a really tough starting scenario for a campaign. Uh, usually I either barely make it out uh, with a <laughs> decent uh, deck with, filled with all of my card pool, or um, I just get defeated. But it is what it is, it's a tough scenario, so let's see how Min does, so let's get started. I have pre-shuffled the decks. Uh, we start in the theater. It's a two-start location with zero clues, so let's see what we draw from the deck. Uh, emergency cash, perception, lantern, resourceful, and field work. Uh, right away, we don't need the resourceful. Right away, uh, perception is card draw. I'm really liking the lantern and field work. And uh, I think 
kai me uh, alikan perception and uh, source for. And we have find hiding spots and guts. Okay. At least something to help us get the early clues easier. And guts is generally a good card because uh, willpower checks are quite usual in Arkham and at least in this scenario we have uh, the one core set encounter set that has a lot of willpower checks so that feels quite a, like a good good card I think I'm starting pl uh, by playing the field work just use these arcane slots because I don't have any spells So, first action, I'll play the field work and field work. After you move to a location, if that location has at least one clue on it, exhaust field work, you get plus two skill value for the next skill test you perform this uh, phase. So, it basically gives us easier investigates. So, it's a good card to get down early. Uh, second action, I think I'll move to the backstage. Uh, as a tactic, I usually always go first to the backstage because you might get the required three clues from all of those locations. Then you can advance and have a higher chance to get the stranger into the uh, lobby doorway locations. So you don't have to go so many times back and forth in this scenario. Just a, <laughs> a pretty useful tip if you're not played this scenario a lot. Uh, so we move to backstage. Backstage is a three shroud location with one clue forced when backstage is revealed. Put two of the set aside backstage doorway locations into play at random. While you are at the backstage, each hidden treachery in your hand counts as three cards instead of one for the purposes of counting your, your hand size. Well, at least we don't have any hidden cards yet. Then we pick the backstage locations and uh, put them like this. And uh, add the connectors. Then, uh, last action, I'll exhaust the field work to investigate here. And uh, as usual, I'm playing on standard, and uh, at the start of the scenario, there are only uh, skull special tokens in the back, and the usual tokens. So um, the skulls are only minus one, so I have a high chance of succeeding because uh, with field work, I'm three up on this skill test now. So I'm investigating six versus three. And it's a skull, so we manage to grab this clue. That is all of our actions for the first turn. Uh, no enemies, we go to upkeep, we draw guts, uh, we gain one resource, and that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom to the agenda, uh, one of six. The encounter card for this turn is frozen in fear. So, uh, I really, <laughs> really hate this card, but luckily we have a lot of guts uh, or um, willpower icons to commit. And uh, about min, uh, when an investigator at your location commits a card to a skill test, that card gains an, a wild icon until the end of the test, limit once for each investigator per round. So. Uh, the guts are basically plus three, so double skill icon cards are really efficient in uh, min. Okay, well, um, this should be ready. Uh, frozen in fear, so move, fight, or evade are double. We just need to 
uh, move so we have to spend two actions i move here and we find the rehearsal room and uh, I need to use the field work well. I might as well because I have nothing else to use it on this turn. Because it ends at the end of the phase. So uh, six versus one. So we are pretty surely taking a horror from this test. Uh, of course, if we hit the auto, <laughs> auto fail, we don't, so uh, we failed. And nothing else uh, at the end of the turn will commit cuts. I'll use uh, Mint's ability. So we uh, test and getting rid of Frozen in fear. And it's an Elder Sign. So, effect plus one, you may choose a skill card committed to the skill test to return it to its owner's hand after this test stands. So uh, I'll end the test, I'll succeed, this gets discarded, I draw a ca card from the guts and I'll return the guts into my hand. So uh, pretty good uh, test there. Uh, we go to upkeep, we draw a card, we get unexpected courage, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cards. So uh, yeah. We have a plenty, a big hand already, which is quite usual with min. And this ready is, uh, we gain one resource, and that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add another doom, uh, and counter card. This turn is uh, twisted to his will. If there is no doom in play, twisted to his will can search. Otherwise, just willpower X, where X is the amount of doom in play. If you fail, discard two cards from your hand at random. We really don't want to discard cards from our hand at random, so I'll commit the guts and I'll add plus one from min. Uh, I'm testing seven versus two. It's a skull, so we pass and uh, guts trigger the draw card. Uh, we gain letter codes. A first action will investigate here. Uh, actually, first action I'll lay down the lantern. So I'll use the lantern to investigate. So I'm investigating a 4 to a 0. So we can't fail this unless we pull an auto fail. So a minus 4 doesn't uh, affect us. So we didn't succeed by 2 or more. So we don't take the horror, but we still take the clue. And last action will move back to the backstage. So we still need one clue to advance, so hopefully the other backstage doorway location has, has a clue in it. But no enemies, we will go to upkeep, we get analytical mind, and we gain one resource. So... Still seven cards, so that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We add a Doom, we are at 3 of 6 Doom, and counter card for this turn is Rotting Remains. Uh, test will power 3, for each point you fail by, take one horror, and again, I think I'll avoid taking the horror, and I'll... Um, actually... We are testing 4 versus 3. We could end up taking a lot of horror, so I think I'll uh, commit the guts. So um, I'll use the means ability. So uh, I'll add one symbol there. So 7 versus 3. Uh, minus 3. So we pass and we draw a car card from Guts. Uh, we find Dr. Milan Christopher, which is a really good draw at this point. I'll immediately play as first action uh, Dr. Milan Christopher down. 
second action will move to the backstage doorway and unfortunately no clues there so we'll have to move back down and that is our turn no enemies we go to upkeep uh, we draw a card we get the baseball bats and we gain another resource so that was a quick turn um, uh, th this is quite unfortunate because now there is a possibility that we go there and uh, a stranger spawns back here so we have to keep running around but luckily we have some tech to uh, play hiding spots or something like that so we can pass through enemies if they spawn somewhere here eat more easily but yeah that is that turn let's go to the next turn uh, we are at 4 Doom of 6, encounter card for this turn is the King's Edict. Uh, no clues were moved, so King's Edict can search. So we'll just search that another King's Edict who shuffled the deck. And another rotting remains, so... I think I... I have 7 cards. I think I'm fine testing because now we have uh, Dr. Milan Christopher who can show at least one horror if we fail it uh, badly. So I'm testing 4 versus 3. It's a minus 1, so luckily we don't uh, lose any, any sanity. First action will move to the theater, second action will move to the lobby. And lobby is a four sharp location with one clue. Uh, forced when lobby is revealed, put two of the set aside lobby lock doorway locations into play at random. Action, uh, double action draw three cards. So at least uh, we have a clue here to get. So we shuffle the lobby doorway locations. And. Uh, There is one clue on this location which we try to get. So, last action, let's investigate here. Uh, I'm investigating 5 versus 4, which is not enough for my taste. Uh, actually, using the lantern 5 versus 3, but still, I'll commit the unexpected courage and add a token. Uh, Wild icon there, so oh yeah, um, let's back up. I'm using the field work, so I think we can pass using that. So I'm investigating five, six, seven versus three. So okay, I think that's good enough. So four up, uh, it's a minus one, so we grab this clue. And we have enough clues to advance, so we'll spend the three clues to advance the acts. So, um, this final bow, a shadow creeps along the wall beside you and your heart leaps into your throat. You turn and figure, uh, figure flits away just out of sight. Either your mind is playing tricks on you or someone else is in the theater. You follow the direction of the shadow, routing a nearby corner at the far end of the hall. He stands awaiting you, a man in an elegant black suit, his face covered by a pale mask. Though his attire has changed, you instantly recognize him as the actor who played the role of the stranger, one of the characters from The King in Yellow. He turns and disappears throughout an open doorway, as if taunting you to follow. Choose one of the set aside locations at random, put that location into play and spawn the set aside man in the pallet mask enemy at that location instead of its normal spawn location. Advance to one of the three copies of Act 2 at random. Remove the other two copies of Act 2 from the game without looking at them. So, we have these two locations, so I'll just <laughs> do this behind my back so I don't see which one I'm picking. So we have a 50-50 chance to hit a lobby lock doorway which would be preferred as then the stranger is nearer us and we don't have to run to 
to the backstage location. Uh, plus that, uh, the backstage location is the trap room uh, door location which spawns rats, which we don't want. So let's hope we get the lobby and we get the backstage, of course. Well, <laughs> isn't that isn't that great? At least if I remember correctly, the shroud of that location is quite low, so it's easier to uh, parlay or investigate to get the man in the pallet mask. Okay, well, um, the man in the pallet mask is over here. Just actually put him over here. And so move, move, investigate. So that was our turn. No enemies except the man in the pallet mass, and uh, he is aloof and doesn't hunt or anything. So we go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card. We get manual dexterity. Uh, we gain a resource. Also, we investigate it, so we gain a resource from Dr. Christopher, which we forgot. Oh yeah, uh, one thing I nearly forgot is to we have to randomize these three stranger cards and pick one at random. Let's not forget about that. So these two go away. And that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we are at five of six doom encounter card for this turn is a fanatic and uh, because we have no clues anywhere uh, spawn reveal location with the most clues and after fanatic enters play move one clue from fanatic location to fanatic when you defeat fanatic take control of all of uh, its clues so we can basically just put the fanatic in the dressing room he can enjoy himself there not bothering us in any way and we don't have to deal with him so hmm. I think we we might just use an analytical mind in this playthrough as a, a committed card we are drawing quite a lot, and I think we don't want to draw that much anymore. We are in a good state. So, I think our turn will be move. Move. And uh, last action will... Hmm, let's think about it. We'll actually as a first action play hiding spot here and this is a fast attach hiding spot to any location each non-elite enemy at attached location gains a loop at the end of the phase Okay, there's already an enemy, so let's play it next turn. Uh, the idea here is to uh, play it, so we don't have to deal with the rats. Or, actually, uh, let's just... We could just ditch the lantern to deal with the rats. Okay, yeah, <laughs> back up. Mm. Yeah, I'll just last action play the leather coat, so I have it ready. Okay, uh, that is our turn. Uh, no enemy ac activity. We go to upkeep. We draw the silver twilight acolyte. Well, of course. Well, of course. And uh, again, one resource. Let's just put this. So the acolyte is engaged with us, so this changes our next turn. 
unfortunately. Okay, well. Uh, that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a Doom, so the agenda advances. So. The Emissary's message. Abruptly, the mal body of an unnatural nightmare slams onto the stage. Its littering tendrils reach into the aisles. It opens its maw and lets out a shrill, piercing song. The melody is uncanny. The notes sear into your mind. Pain pounds in your forehead and blood runs on your ears. Search the set-aside cards and the victor display for the royal emissary enemy and spawn it in the theater. Okay, so... We get the Royal Emissary enemy also. So this is <laughs> where the scenario starts to become quite tricky. Uh, on top of that we get an encounter card. Let's see, hopefully not an enemy. Uh, we get the whispers in your head. So... Well, isn't that nice? Uh, Pearl hidden secretly at whispers in your head is may in your hand. You cannot commit cards to skill tests. So maybe the worst card uh, for me. Okay. How do we uh, resolve this now? So, past action. We'll play the hiding spot over here. So it's just placed over there. Uh, as, uh, it's, it's a fast action, so we don't take an attack of opportunity, but now we do, so we we'll move, take one damage, and we have to place one Doom on the current agenda, and this really sucks, but we'll move here, and it's the trap room, after you reveal the top Trap room, search and counter deck and discard pile for one copy of Swarm of Rafts and put it into play, engage with you. So, we search for the Swarm of Rafts. It's engaged with us. And on Luckily, the man in the pallet mask is not. But um, we will. Uh, there's a clue here, so we will use field work to evade this uh, silver twilight acolyte. Actually, let's not even play this because the hiding spot doesn't work because the man in the pallet mask is ready here. Yeah. So we are uh, evading uh, 4 versus 3. It's a 0, so at least this um, cultist is evaded. Last action, we will punch the rats. I can't commit cards, so I'm just punching uh, two versus one. It's another zero. At least we kill off the rats. But yeah, uh, we are in quite trouble with this damn acolyte and this um, whispers in your head. Okay, um, enemy face, the emissary hunts here, and we'll take one horror. 
and uh, that is it. Upkeep the twilight acolyte readies. So we'll engage with it again. We'll draw a card. Survival instinct. Uh, if only we could get rid of this. Well, I think we have to get rid of this next turn somehow. Or not. We could just do something else. Yeah. Okay, well, um, we also gain one resource, so that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we add a doom. Encounter card for this turn is dissonant voices. So we can't play assets or events. Well, mm, we don't really have any way of playing anything. So I think we are just doing the double action to get rid of this damn card and we'll take one attack of opportunity and one doom. And I'll actually uh, the letter code breaks so Uh, second action. Uh, last action, actually. We will evade the Yeah, we'll evade the acolytes. So I'm evading six versus uh, seven versus three uh, minus four. So we just barely managed to evade. Uh, we try uh, draw a survival instinct. So let us see what happens. So. Okay, that is our turn, enemy phase, the emissary hunts here, I will take two damage, one horror, this goes away. So uh, this readies in the upkeep, engages us again, I draw a card, field work and we gain one resource. So. We're pretty stuck here, unfortunately. Let's see how, if we can find a way out. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we are already at four doom. The encounter card for this turn is twisted to his will. Uh, we think. We could test it uh, 4 vs 4. Uh, no, let's test it 7 vs 4. Minus 2. So we pass. Uh, we have to figure out. So I think we have to evade, evade, and uh, parlay. So first we evade the Twilight Acolytes. Uh, minus one. Then uh, we will evade the Emissary. I'll commit the field work and one of the survival instincts to this test. It's a minus one. Okay, and uh, 
last action we will call a the man in the palette mask have no icons to commit so I'm mm, it's a shroud of uh, so five versus five hope we get lucky it's a plus one so this is all eight let's see what happens uh, when the man in the pallet mass would be discarded from play advance and uh, investigate uh, if you succeed instead of discovering clues defeat the man in the pallet mass so we defeat it and uh, in, instead of discarding the man in the pallet mass move him to the lobby add two uh, tablets to the back, so we have tablets now. Place one horror on the location the man in the pallet mask was moved from. Uh, instead of horror, I will be using these uh, blood tokens. Until the end of the scenario, horror on locations represent the advancing ooze, and each location with horror gain is forced. After you leave this location, test um, agility 4. If you fail, take one horror and one damage. Okay. So, and then we have now a resign in the lobby when the man in the pallet mass is not in play. Uh, at the end of the round, place one horror on each location with no horror that is connected to that to a location with horror, and we have to resign. So, at the end of the round, we'll add horror here or ooze, whatever. Uh, enemy face, nothing happens except we take a horror. Upkeep this uh, ready. So, actually, uh, at the end of the enemy phase, I'll play the... Oh yeah, I don't have the hiding spot anymore. Okay, um, so this readies cases and the uh, royal emissary just readies. So, that is that turn. Uh, we draw a card and we gain one resource. So, let's go to the next turn. Uh, we are at 5 Doom, so I think we are running out of time. That damn Acolyte ruined our schedule, but uh, it is what it is. Let's see if we get an encounter card. Mm, dissonant Voices. Okay. Well, uh, luckily it doesn't stop us from playing uh, uh, skill cards, so... First action, I will survive on instinct, and I'm evading the royal emissary. And it's a minus one. Uh, we managed to evade royal emissary. Then survival instincts. Uh, I'm immediately disengaged from each other enemy engaged with him or her and make to connect the location. So I disengage from this acolyte, move to a connecting location. And I have to test agility 4. Take damage and a horror. And I fail, I'll take one damage on horror. And I'll move from here to here and test agility for so two versus four minus one. I'll take a damage and a horror. Last action, I'll move to the lobby. And unfortunately, uh, we will run out of time. This goes away. Uh, the acolyte hunts here. Yeah, 
uh, next turn we could have successfully tried to uh, investigate this location. I could have used the perception to the, uh, get the man in the ballot mask off of the game and then resign. So that is really, <laughs> really annoying that we took the uh, doom from the acolytes. Otherwise, we would have uh, managed to get out. But yeah, let's play it out. Uh, upkeep, we draw a card, we get resourceful, we gain one resource. And that is that turn. It's ready. Let's go to the next turn. Okay, so unfortunately, we add a doom. Uh, the agenda advances. Exit now. Each investigator takes 100 horror, cannot be prevented. The song grows louder and louder until it drowns out all of your thoughts. You clubs to the floor and cover your ears, but try as you might, you cannot muffle the intensity of the creature's awful voice. The whole world threatens to close around you until at last you hear a discordant phrase throughout the melody, exit now. So, yeah. 100th horror cannot be prevented, so we take a mental trauma. Uh, the scenario went pretty well until that one turn when we pulled this silver twilight acolyte. That basically ruined the game and the rhythm for us. Uh, we were uh, cruising down to get the man in the palette mask defeated and then uh, deal with the emissary and resign, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, I said at the start that this is a tough scenario. We could uh, maybe play this again, not get that unlucky and succeed, but uh, failing is part of Arkham and I think this deck worked pretty well considering how hard this scenario is. And as you found out, there is uh, not that much fighting go going on. We could have pulled uh, some more enemies, so maybe the uh, baseball bat would have been of some use. Um, so the poltergeist we could have dealt with intellect. Uh, the agent of the king is really nasty. But other than that, there are not that many enemies in this scenario other than the Royal Emissary, and uh, I was thinking I could play the baseball bat try and try to kill the Emissary, but uh, Min really doesn't have enough fighting power, and if we draw the skull and break the bat, uh, then we are really in trouble, so yeah. Overall, um, I really like this scenario, and Min really is one of the best suited to go through solo with only a limited card pool of two core sets and then back to Carcosa Deluxe Box and start the campaign as true solo. The following scenarios uh, really uh, reward good investigative skills and good uh, willpower, so uh, I think with Min you can go really far and succeed in this campaign, so I really uh, recommend you try out Min in this this campaign if you only have the core box and uh, the bad Carcosa box. But uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching and until next time.